Hi guys, this is Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn, and it is time to plant one on me. So I got your questions for today. Um, two very good questions. I'm gonna do the first one from Dr. Honey Badger. How do you keep everything so lush and happy in the winter? I feel like every winter when light and humidity go down, my plants get stressed and white flies descend. Thank you so much for your question, Dr. Honey Badger. Um, yes, northeastern dryness is a problem, particularly in the winter. I mean, I have a house where I have a garage heater as a heater. I think they're kind of illegal, but that's another point. Um, it gets really dry in my house in winter, and as it does with a lot of other houses. So. There's different techniques to keep humidity up because the reality is a lot of the plants that we have in our house are tropical varieties and they like to be in humid conditions. And sometimes it's between 60 and 80% humidity. That's usually not a problem in the summer because it could get pretty humid at least here in New York um, in, the, in that case. So what I basically do is, I mean, you could probably see that I have a lot of plants that are together and that alone will actually rise raise the humidity levels a little bit interestingly enough like in ecosystems like in forest ecosystems forests really create the ecosystem that they want to live in so they will raise the humidity um, up and they'll even create like in the case of like the amazon forest for instance there's a biotic pump that happens with the air that comes off of the ocean and then the the uh, plants along the along the coast will take that water and like literally drop it onto the next bit of plants in the interior coast and that's how water actually gets closer and closer to the interior of the country so forests as much as the little micro ecosystems and microcosms of, of systems that you're creating within your home will actually raise the humidity itself so i've found that even going into one of my rooms back there in the bedroom, it's much more humid than it is in the other room, which has less plants, which is pretty cool. There are certain rooms in your house that have a little bit more humidity, and that might mean taking some of your plants and putting them in those rooms if possible. So for instance, I sometimes will take my staghorn fern with me into the shower because it gets all nice and hot and humid if you're taking a hot shower. And um, I also have a humidifier. So I was thinking of getting two humidifiers for my home. I have yet to do that, but I have one. And I particularly keep my more humid loving plants together in one particular room. That's not the case for all of them, but I do feel that that actually makes them a lot happier. The other thing I do is give my plants a bath. So the ones that are particularly into wanting to have a little bit more humidity. I take those into the shower and spray a little bit of like lukewarm water onto them. Sometimes I'll take the hose and just give them like a good dousing. And I feel like my I've seen definitely a change in my plants, especially the, the calatheas and the, all the prayer plants that I have, which prefer a little bit more humid temperatures. There's other ways that you could actually build humidity. So you probably have heard the technique of using pebble trays. So that's having a larger tray below the plant with pebbles in it. So it's not sitting in water and you have some water within the, the plant, the pebble tray itself, and it will uh, evaporate and that water will go around the plant leaves. Um, other things that you could possibly do are creating like little mini greenhouses. So putting like a little plastic bag or a glass house over it. Um, you might see Tillandsia, so the uh, air plants, they have them in those, usually those little glass homes that are like round globes and you, you stick the um, air plant in there. That is not only for aesthetic purposes, that is also to keep humidity around the air plant, which is important for those types of, um, uh, of genre. So hopefully that was helpful to you, Dr. Honey Badger. And um, yeah, any other questions, you could feel free to, to ask me anytime. The second question is from Cassandra. Help, my calathea leaves are curling. They aren't turning brown, just rolling up like a cocoon. 
what gives? Cassandra, that is actually an excellent question. Um, and I think I have two photos to kind of show what you mean. And I think that this is what you mean. I, I have um, some calatheas that had started to curl and it almost reminded me of certain insects that kind of take the edges of the plant and like wrap the leaf around them and create like a little, um, you know, home for themselves. But that is not the case here. There's no real insect involved if I am not mistaken um, with the with what you're asking. Typically, calatheas and plants of that nature like to be away from the sun. So they are actually plants that truly don't like bright light conditions. They could actually be kept a, a little bit further away from um, from your windows, which is wonderful because not everybody has such bright light conditions. I found that I had my Calathea way too close to my south facing window, as well as another one that's way too close to my north facing window. So I ended up like putting it just, um, uh, just maybe even like a few feet away in the case of the north facing window because it's not like so direct light. It was only about a foot away more and that made all the difference. What's actually happening with the plant is that it's shielding itself. So when you see the plant leaves roll, it's almost like the plant going like, ah, there's light in my eyes. I can't like, stop it, stop it. So it will roll up to protect itself so it doesn't lose its water because it wants to keep on, hold on to that water and keep the humidity within that particular plant. My guess for you is that your plant is too close to the light and it's really only protecting itself. This is not super damaging to the plant at all, so I wouldn't be too worried about it, but if you do pull it back, I guarantee that I'll probably be a lot happier. So I hope that works for you, Cassandra, and um, thank you all for your questions. It's so very cool there's like so many more that i have to get to and i really appreciate that you ask them so um, feel free to add the questions here below the youtube video you could ask them on instagram at homestead brooklyn and on twitter at s-r-o-a-k-e-s -E um, i'm sure you could find me so feel free to ask away and don't forget to subscribe to the channel that will allow you to find out when all these videos get released. Thanks again.